الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة وعلى عباده الذين استفى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our next or uh, second uh, webinar on Does Islam Need Feminism? Islam or Feminism which can truly liberate women Now in this particular session uh, which will be approximately one and a half hour we have some excellent speakers and uh, people who will, will discuss the issue related to Islam and Feminism Now before I uh, get into the detail let's just introduce some of these speakers so our first somebody who you may already be acquainted with in our previous session is daniel hakikatju now i'll just briefly outline again his uh, his profile but daniel uh, daniel was born in houston texas and he uh, attended harvard university and he uh, majored in physics and minored in philosophy um, he completed a master's degree in philosophy at tufts university and is the director of religion and scientism well, was the director of religion and scientism at the Yaqeen Institute. Um, Daniela has also studied traditional Islamic sciences, uh, part-time he writes and lectures on contemporary issues surrounding Muslims on modernity, life and culture, and of course, on feminism. Um, he also writes critical analysis of the theories of biological evolution, which we discussed in our previous webinar. Uh, Daniela has spoken a number of, has spoken at a number of universities, community centers and mosques uh, around the USA. Um, and he's in ma mainly in relation to Islam, Islamic ethos, the mentality, and various other topics. So his uh, collected writings can be viewed on his blog, muslimskeptic.com, where he regularly posts his work, uh, and he's written a number of very interesting articles. Uh, one other interesting article was the, the Sexual Misery of the Western World, which we will talk about later on, inshallah, in our webinar. Um, our second... Um, guest speaker is Zara Faris. Uh, Zara uh, Faris graduated, sister Zara Faris graduated in uh, Arabic and Islamic studies from Soas University School of Oriental and African Studies. Uh, she's lived uh, for a year in Egypt studying Arabic language and she is now a researcher, writer and an international speaker for the Muslim Debate Initiative. Um, and Zara is also, sister Zara is a, of Kurdish Pakistani origin. Um, so Zara has delivered lectures at universities around the country, including uh, a number of different universities um, on women in Islam, justice for women and men, feminism, reformation, and revival and Muslims in the West. She's also had regular TV and radio media appearances, including on Islam Channel on BBC Radio. Um, Zara has also debated feminism with former Green Party leader Natalie Bennett, journalist Julie Bindle and academic Ziba Mir, Mir Husseini and Marina Mathathir, daughter of the former Malaysian Prime Minister. Um, she's also debated, this house believes Sharia law is fairer than English law, with an English law judge and QC. Uh, and she's also debated Islamic reformation with Tom Holland. So she's clearly somebody who's quite heavily involved in debating with a number of different uh, sort of understandings about Islam and so forth. Um, She's currently writing her first book. I'm not sure whether Zara, her sister Zara has completed the book, but on women's rights without feminism. So we'll get to hear a bit about that book later on, inshallah, as well. And finally, our third um, guest speaker is uh, Fatima Barakatullah. Uh, and uh, Sister Fatima has a rich Islamic education from an early age, uh, thanks to her parents. And she married and passionately is raising four children. Uh, she studied Arabic and Islamic studies in Egypt at prominent institutes such as Al Fajr Center, uh, Qurtuba Institute, and uh, College of Al Azhar University. And is currently training to be in, uh, well, I'm, I'm assuming she's already in the state of Islamic scholarship with senior scholars in institutes in the UK. She has been uh, a key contributor to the discourse surrounding Muslim women in the West, uh, contributing to the Westminster faith debate, documentaries, and live shows for BBC Radio the World Service, as well as BBC Television, Channel 4, and Islam Channel. Uh, in 2014, she was also awarded, awarded I don't, I'm not sure if I'm saying this the right way, but Icon Ukhwa International Award for Young Women in Dawah and Community Service at a ceremony in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And currently, Sister Fatima is the director of Seeds of Change, 
uh, which is one of the biggest Muslim women's conference in Europe. And I'm sure Sister, Fa uh, Sister Fatima will give us a bit of insight in terms of uh, what this particular organization does. So I won't waste any more time. What we'll do is for, uh, for the, over the next one hour, what we will generally do is just put some questions to the panel. Um, and once we've done that for about an hour, then the last half hour, we will open up questions to the audience. Now, hopefully, some of the questions I will be putting to the panel are also uh, questions that you guys are already uh, quite interested in generally anyway. Um, so first of all, let me start off with um, uh, Danielle. Um, just before we go into the topic of feminism, um, and before we come to you, Daniel, actually, uh, let's just uh, ask um, Fatima, uh, Sister Fatima, let's get re do deeply into the root of the question. Does Islam need feminism? Sister Fatima. Yes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother well, and panelist. Um, the question, does Islam need feminism? Um, I, I would look at it from, from this perspective. Um, first of all, we know that Islam, well, we know that we have a creator. Uh, we believe in our creator. We believe that he uh, sent us guidance uh, through the prophets and then through the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, if we believe that we have a creator and we believe that the creator sent us guidance, then that guidance that he sent us is comprehensive guidance, as uh, the Quran itself tells us, you know, that uh, Allah says, uh, today I have completed for you your religion or your, the way of life that I have approved for you. So since Islam is a complete and a comprehensive way of life and the last message uh, sent to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator through the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we would expect it to be complete we, would, we 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 know that it is but I, but i mean that even just from that perspective we would expect yes this the, the way of life is complete the answers and to the problems that human beings have uh, can best be given by the creator. And so everything that we need as human beings, male and female, to live a good life, to be happy in this life, to be successful in the comprehensive sense of the word, meaning in this life and in the next, um, to cater for our, not just our physical needs, because we, we don't, we know that we aren't just physical beings, but also for our spiritual, our our ruh, our our souls, we would expect uh, the way of life. I think we may have lost Fatima. Okay. Yes. We would expect that way of life to fulfill that. So, as a Muslim, um, I believe Islam doesn't need any external kind of ism or schism to come in and uh, you know fix it, so to speak. If anything, if we were to return and to uh, practice and to observe uh, the way of life revealed to us by our Creator properly, it would solve and uh, cater for all of our needs. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, Sister Zara, just get your perspective on this. Before we go into the depths of feminism, what, what exactly is feminism? And surely it's not a good, is, is it a good thing or is it not a good thing to demand women's rights? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everybody um, who's joined today. Um, thank you for inviting me and thank you to everybody who's, who's joined us as well. Um, I think this question often arises um, for one key reason, the issue on feminism and whether it's either compatible with Islam or whether it's helpful to Muslims. And that is because we often conflate women's rights with feminism and we treat them as though they're the same thing. We treat women's rights and feminism as though they are synonymous. And um, the reality is that they're not synonymous. And there's a couple of reasons why, which I'd like to go into and, and share with you today. Um, feminism, it, it, the best way to understand 
its place in society. Feminism is to women's rights what capitalism or communism is to economics. So econos, economics, for example, is resource distribution. It's about how we distribute wealth and how we distribute all kinds of material resources. And capitalism and communism have their own ideologies on resource distribution, but they are in of themselves not economics. So ec um, capitalism is not economics. Communism is not economics. They're merely different worldviews to the question of resource distribution. Now, similarly, feminism is just one approach to the issue of women's rights and Islam is another approach to the issue of women's rights. Hopefully you start to see where I'm going with this. Um, now in its most generic terms possible, um, per your question, feminism is often described by most people um, as you know, generally the equality of men and women. And I don't think anybody here um, would disagree with the sentiment behind that. And um, it's not the fact that when somebody is criticizing or questioning feminism that they're, you know, um, questioning the idea that, you know, there shouldn't be any kind of oppression between men and women. They're separate things. Um, so feminism and Islam's approach to women's rights, um, as has uh, been sort of uh, touched upon briefly by Sister Fatima already, um, they have very little in common with one another. Um, other than this very broad notion of, you know, not wanting to oppress women, for example. That's the broadest, I suppose, you could take it. But beyond that general platitude, we see that with feminism, for example, it's based on the notion of individualism, um, which is contrary to uh, the underlying notion of, of Islam or being a Muslim, which is in individualism, the individual or you know, the individual person or the self is more important than society, culture, religion, or even God. And as a result for, for feminism or for feminists, um, again, which is just one approach to women's rights, uh, for feminists, they often will um, be the ones trying to define what those women's rights should be. Feminists will often be the ones trying to define what women's roles should be. And because of the very diverse and fractured nature of feminism itself, that often results in a lot of disagreement amongst even feminists as to what those rights should look like and how to attain them. So it's basically a big game of trial and error and nobody's really certain among feminists about what the end goal ought to look like. Whereas on the other hand, um, Islam, the Islam, uh, Islam as an approach to the issue of women's rights. Uh, it's a worldview that isn't centered on the individual, but rather it's centered on the creator. So as Sister Fatima mentioned, um, for us, it's about the creator. Um, it's not about individuals' personal ideas, but it's about what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, ordain for us as to how society should work. For us, God is the arbiter of that, and the Quran and the Sunnah provide for us uh, the method uh, to establish that. So the question comes down to, to that sort of terminology, to, that, um, to the methodology and how we define those goals, rather than merely the sentiment behind it. And um, one final point on this that I think is really useful to know going into this discussion. A lot of people use the term feminism um, for, for a couple of different reasons. So sometimes uh, sisters will use it I would say innocently, because for them, they may, as I said, use it to mean women's rights. Um, but for the reasons mentioned above, we should be careful of, of interchanging those terms because they're not the same thing. On the other hand, however, there are some who might um, use it thinking that the term feminism or, you know, the, the label feminist or, or the language of feminism carries with it some social weight um, and sometimes people use it thinking it carries more influential social weight than using the term Islam or Muslim. And oftentimes uh, there may be groups or individuals um, who use the term thinking that they can enlist either help or sympathy from outside their community and often um, whether willing or not against their own community and of course that comes with its own strings attached which we can go into later but um, that's what one of the problems with it and the other problem is that sometimes um, the term feminism is used um, by Muslims occasionally also to broadcast a kind of rejection of their own culture and I'll, and I'll end this question with this point which is that 
a lot of the problems that we are facing, particularly in terms of um, the rights of either women or men in our society, it is not, as we know, because of Islam, but the absence of Islam. And often it's because of the cultures that we um, that we allow to, you know, to, to persist in our in our communities. And the question that we need to ask, when people want to advocate change, who are we addressing? So when Muslims want to advocate change for women, um, sometimes we hear the, you know, the, the, the fact that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, whenever he was approached by a woman who had a complaint or a grievance or an issue that he would listen. And so we should also listen when women have complaints. Yes, we should listen. However, the question is who has the ability to change the status quo at the moment? Who are we addressing with these concerns? And at the moment, sometimes we have sisters that use the term feminism and they go to those that have what little authority they do have, which isn't much. They may go to you know, certain individuals in the community and using feminist language or using the term feminism, they are essentially alienating their own allies. They are alienating the very people who may actually agree with, with you know, the fact that these grievances are genuine. They may agree, and they most probably do. But the problem is when we couch our issues or our complaints in the language of feminism, we are um, putting on the back that people who quite rightly associate feminism with um, a foreign ideology that has, you know, and as I'm sure we'll go into later, um, cause a lot of harm and a lot of damage um, throughout, uh, you know, to, to Muslim communities um, throughout history. And so the language and the use of the term feminism is often met with, you know, an understandable backlash. Now, if we just used different words, so describing behavior that is non-Islamic, so where, uh, for example, a woman is being denied, um, you know, her right as, as a Muslim woman, if we describe that as oh, this is because of jahiliya, this is because this is un-Islamic, nobody's going to disagree with them. Nobody is going to say, oh, no, jahiliya can be a good thing. Nobody's going to say that. But when we say, you know, um, this is, you know, this is, and there's all kinds of manners of terminology that we, that we can get into, but a lot of language that is associated with feminism, we're alienating the very people who won would be our allies in changing this and establishing a kind of um, more accountability in society. We're alienating them and we are also, um, you know, we are not doing justice to what Islam is as a religion, which is a holistic approach to dealing with these issues. And instead we are bringing in um, alternative worldviews that actually muddy the situation rather than clarify them. So hopefully that's a, it's quite a lot there, but hopefully that's you know um, a good place to to um, to initiate some of these questions uh, uh, this evening, inshallah. Okay, sorry, Danielle. Um, just the the issue related to um, uh, I noticed that one of the articles that you wrote on uh, your one, your website was about relating the war on terror to Islam and feminism. Do you think give us a bit of an insight into into what's all that what what the war on terror to Islam and feminism is all about. Absolutely. Um, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam, alhamdulillah. Um, so just to preface the question uh, on the war on terror, let me just make clear that I consider myself to be an anti-feminist. Um, and the reason is I believe that feminism is a very corrosive and destructive ideology. I think what um, Sister Zara and Fatima have said is absolutely true that Islam and feminism are separate and in many ways not compatible. But I go even further to say that uh, feminism is anti-Islamic, anti-Muslim. And the fact of the matter is that feminism is one of the most influential ideologies that's negatively impacting the faith of Muslims around the world and has been used to attack Muslims and continues, continues to be used to attack Muslim societies and Islam. And I think that, as uh, has been mentioned already, the reason that some Muslims find feminism attractive is because they see that Islam and feminism overlap or seemingly overlap in some areas. Feminism advocates respect for women and Islam advocates respect for women. Feminism uh, advocates for women's rights 
uh, in some sense, and Islam advocates for women's rights depending on what those rights are and whether they're legitimate or not. So there are these overlaps, but we can't ignore all the areas um, where feminism is contrary to Islam and is in fact anathema to Islam. And I think there are three main areas that we have to focus on. I'm going to touch on these three areas uh, probably more than once uh, in, in the course of this webinar. But number one, uh, the central pillar of feminism is this idea of patriarchy. Namely, this idea that all of history, since the dawn of time, men have been working together in a sort of conspiracy to subjugate women for their own benefit. And that there are these patriarchal structures of power that systematically favor uh, men over women. And um, you can internalize patriarchy, and patriarchy affects our language and our systems of thought. And so, but this idea of patriarchy is highly problematic to Islam because our Prophet, Salaam, peace be upon him, was a man. All the Khulafa al Rashidun were men. All the major schools of thought uh, were founded by men. All the major works of tafsir, of kalam, of uh, fiqh, and so on and so forth, these were all primarily done by men, which is not to say that there weren't any female scholars in our tradition, there, there certainly were, but the vast majority were men. So this is seen as a big, big problem uh, in, according to the feminist philosophy, and many Muslim feminists have a major issue and a problem with the Islamic tra tradition for precisely this reason. And the fact that, the, that Islamic scholarship is dominated by men means that we have to be suspicious of Islamic scholarship and the Islamic tradition as far as feminism is concerned. So these feminists attack, okay, and they, they try to undermine the Islamic tradition. They attack the Quran. You have Muslim feminists, not all Muslim feminists, but you have some who will attack the Quran and will say, we have to say no to the Quran, right? And that's a direct quote from uh, one of the most prominent Muslim feminists, that in some cases, in some contexts, it is appropriate to say no to the Quran. And you have Muslim feminists who are attacking the Anbiya, the Prophet. You have uh, so many Muslim feminists who are attacking uh, all aspects of Islamic law, the Sharia, and all aspects of fiqh and the tradition as a whole. So this idea of patriarchy is very, very corrosive um, to Islam and to uh, Muslim society. So that's one. The second thing is that feminism um, also attacks the family and attacks the home. And Islam is a religion that really, really emphasizes the importance of family and the importance of the home. The home is the central hub of a Muslim's life. And the, and the family, the extended family, is the central institution of a Muslim's life and of Muslim society. But in the modern world, that's no longer the case, unfortunately. And that's in large part because of feminism and how feminism has attacked uh, the family. But, uh, you know, I, I hopefully don't need to emphasize how important family is in Islam, um, how often Allah mentions in the Quran and the Prophet Islam has mentioned maintaining ties of kinship, Salat al-Rahim, how um, we are told to respect and honor our parents, how we're supposed to respect and honor our mothers, especially, and our fathers. But these are institutions that feminism attacks, uh, sometimes in very overt ways and sometimes in much more subtle ways. Feminists call motherhood bondage, uh, especially in the first wave of feminism and the second wave of feminism and now in the third wave. Motherhood is seen as a big problem. Fatherhood, the father is a patriarch. Father should be seen with suspicion, right? Um, parents need to be uh, uh, wary of ha even having children, which is why uh, birth control and abortion are so emphasized within feminist discourse, because children are a burden. And children also should be wary of their parents, especially their fathers. So all of this is attacking the family and the institution of the family, which is so important within Islam. And so we can see a very direct clash and we can see the effects of this in the Muslim world. So that's the second thing about feminism. And the third thing is that um, 
feminism has been used as a tool against Muslim society in the past and in the present in, in terms of colonialism and even today in terms of programs that are being exported into the Muslim world in order to re-educate Muslims, uh, you know, quote unquote, re-educate them and to influence the way that Muslims uh, form their families and the way that society is structured. So feminism has been used as a tool to further colonialism, to further occupation, to justify invasions, to justify wars against Muslims for over a hundred years. And so we have to be aware of that reality. We have to be aware of that history and how it's being continued even up to this day. So I, given these three points, it's very clear how feminism is anti-Muslim, it is anti-Islam, and we need to be very aware of this and not just have this naive view that, okay, feminism is something that can be accommodated. Uh, even though, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, and Sister Zara also mentioned that there are some areas of overlap, but does that o overlap mean that we should uh, just accept uh, the concept wholesale? Islam overlaps with many other ideologies like communism uh, that was mentioned or other ideologies that are anti-Islam. So we have to be aware of this.